Welcome to Neurons to Nirvana, a platform for creative forces that embrace the unconventional and the quest for artistry, humanity, innovation, health, and healing of the mind and soul. Join me, Tom Hartridge, on a journey celebrating experiences unbound by physical borders or traditional norms from inside the mind to the far reaches of the universe. This is Neurons to Nirvana. Hey again, everyone. You're listening to episode four of the Discover Utopia sessions. And what I want to share with you is, as I mentioned in the prior episode featuring Carrie with Calliope Musicals, is Colt Wayne Keeney and his lovely wife, Noble. I met Colt at Utopia. And this episode is after the actual festival. But when you watch and listen to him play, you realize that this guy's got talent and his songwriting abilities are amazing. And he's just a, he's just a great guy from East Texas. So without further ado, here's Colt and his wife, Noble. Colt, Noble, how are you this what evening? What up, buddy? Doing good. What's Fantastic. Now that we've spent hours <laughs> with you already. <laughs> mm-hmm. How pool hanging up. What has it been? Mm-hmm. Five hours or so? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Who can keep track? When I can't. We've just been terrible having fun. keeping track at time. Yeah. But um, so I just I briefly met you at Utopia, but I definitely met this guy. Oh, you definitely met this guy. <laughs> and we became fast <laughs> friends. But uh, before we get into all that, Colt, why don't you tell me or both of you about your band and how it became or culminated? The Genesis. I've had a multitude of projects over the years spanning, uh, what, I guess I started taking it super seriously in 2015, so when I was around 25, uh, but I had a band before that in college, and then I've been playing since I was like 13, but this project now was the first time that I kind of like went back to my roots, which is in uh, folk music and country, and I grew up in the church and Church of Christ, so I've just kind of always been around the gospel stuff, and... Um, that kind of thing and uh over covid decided to do a more country uh kind of more my country roots kind of chill out screaming like wah instead of doing all that like kind of get a little more like into my um just songwriter mode yeah we did this uh it was me and two buddies that we basically slept on the you know during uh the pandemic um uh, what was it? Shelter in place. We shelter in place at a studio, and uh, there, you know, Josh ran a working studio and is one of the best drummers in the city, if not the state. So he's like a full time, incredible musician, and all of his work left. Morgan, uh, another producer on it, uh, was he's just kind of like a rambling man. We all ended up just not having anything to do and barely any money. So I basically paid them in chicken. Uh, they just basically were like beer and chicken and I was sober. I was sober at the time. So like I would just buy them beer and watch them get drunk throughout the day and then I'd cook them chicken. And we spent like a month and a half straight of just like ha- hammering it. Cause we're basically just trying to keep our mind off of the world. And then the second the rev- record, uh, we realized it was over. We kind of like freaked out and just all like I moved out of state and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. Where'd yeah. you move? I moved to Taos, New Mexico. My okay. my brother is a river guide uh, in Trilingua, and he plugged me in to be a river guide in Taos. And then I went from Taos to Northern California to go trim uh, weed in Grass Valley. And then from there, I went to Humboldt County. And in Humboldt, her brother lives in Arcata. So then I got plugged in. I was just freaking out. I was going to get stuck in the, the city. So yeah, the record was just kind of... Well, I've never really recorded a record before, and I've never been in a studio in my life until that uh, time period. And was uh uh so aghast at like how little i had to show for how much work i've done over the years and out of like being pissed off and frustrated i was like i have to do at least one thing to like prove to myself that i can like have something that be like before we all die <laughs> yeah 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 or whatever whatever was gonna happen you know like I, you know everybody was freaking out and uh so yeah so i mean because i've you know had tons of intense projects and they're just like stuff that's local but like you know there's been no project i've had that you know there aren't somebody somewhere that knows who they 
they are. I just never, um, uh, I don't know. I just w- I grew up in the theater too. So I was always more obsessed with like the live performance, live connection with people, good live shows. Like if you don't, if you're a band that's not good live, like you suck. To me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like my, not saying that that's the case. Wow. For, for the, that's just how my brain's wired. It's like yeah. I show up I'm live to like melt your face. Like we're here yeah. to like beat your face in with like great, li- like a live show, you know? Live music's you know? the it's the real deal it's just i'm from texas i'm from you you know i grew up in san mark like i learned in san marcos like live music is like the thing you know so that was just kind of how my brain's wired i mean being in the studio wasn't even like a thing until i was like forced to like do it because of covid and then we did a really awesome record now i'm obsessed with the studio like i prefer it now prefer it almost as much as i do um about equal like live like i love the studio so much now like it's so it's um it's amazing it just it, it expanded my whole like mindset for like what what i can get across because a lot of times uh, like i work out all this stuff with l- bands live and then i'm like no 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 you're doing it wrong it goes like this it goes like bah, 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 and they're like what you know because i didn't learn how to play like a Jack Back. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Right. But um, so yeah, it's a been way fr- meaner it, Jack Black yeah, if you're yeah, in the rehearsal yeah, space. Yeah, with yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I'm kind of. Are you a dictator? I'm, I'm intense. Are you intense? I, I, I'm, I'm super intense. It's only super because intense. of love yeah, it's and super hate. Intense. Yeah. But the studio made me realize that I don't have to like do the song and dance to get my point across. I can sit and 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 hear back and show more. You know, because if you're in a live setting, you can't play everything all at once and show whatever. You know, like. But if you're in a studio. Be like, okay, the drums go like this. We record the drums. Bass goes like this. And you layer there. it, right? And then you can layer it. And then, and then I can be like, well, the guitar part, instead of me trying to show you the guitar, I'll just do the guitar part. And then you can go do it live or, or whatever, you know. And I, I'd never done it, you know, been around anything like that. So it was just cool. It's just, you know, it just broadened my whole mind, you know. But Josh Blue and uh, Morgan Taylor Howell are the two guys on that record. It was uh, us three. Noble came in and sang Back Up and uh yeah but those two guys are like the, i do the have to dude. mention i tried to lay down percussion in the way that my heart dictated and then when it was time to lay down the record josh was like i'm gonna do the percussion <laughs> yeah but jo- i mean josh blue is like he's incredible he's, he's an unbelievable musician and producer and i mean he's a gangster and morgan taylor howe is uh, I mean, Morgan Taylor Howe's in jail right now for shooting a guy in Houston uh, like oh, a no. couple Are years you ago. Are serious? Well, <laughs> yeah. Cole unreal, has a dude. burner yeah. phone yeah. Just, for just for Morgan. Just for Morgan to call me from jail. From prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's doing two years. But basically... <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. wild. Yeah. Man. No, well, I had no idea. I had no idea what was... Good. Me and him became immediate friends, music friends. And he is the reason I started going more into country because he was like, bro, you're doing all this screaming crazy shit. Your name is Colt Wayne Keeney. You're six foot three. You're from Texas. He's like, cut a country record. You're (laughs) an idiot. And I was like, oh, yeah. All All right. right. Fuck it. So anytime we'd hang out, like a cop would come around and like, (laughs) no one likes cops, but he would like way overreact. It'd be like, what is on? But I never, it never crossed my mind. I never thought about it. And then he's the one that after the record was done, talked us into going up to Humboldt to go trim weed. And it was like, okay, cool. So then we go up there. And uh, we're hanging out in Humboldt, and he owned a yacht that he'd bought uh, some years ago, or a, a sailboat that he lived on when he was up there. So I leave for a time or whatever, and then um, come to find out, he had this thing where he like like uh, shot a friend of his in the in the in the. I don't want to actually say too much, but like, like but anyway, like, no, a, a guy didn't <laughs> the, a guy didn't die. It was just a crazy scenario. Like he thought he was Morgan has terrible eyesight. It was raining. Like a friend ran. He does a, have terrible he eyesight. Was, uh, t- eyesight. We call it. I call him so Monkey thick. Bear because he's like, Monkey bear? bro. His hair's like this. <laughs> he's like, he's like five foot tall. If he hears this, he'd be so bad at me. But he's like oh, a whatever, shorter man. guy. He's amazing, fucking human being. But he's he's just got like these big, like thick glasses. Can't really see. And he got this guy was attacking him, and uh, it was raining. And then he, you know, this is Texas, so you know, like he had uh, like a gun. And a guy was running at him and thought that it was this guy attacking him, but it was just his friend. And he, he popped him in the leg, got probation for that, and then missed two probations, freaked out, and ran for like five years. And five then I years? met him after. Where, where, was, I mean, where was he? Like running it, around? I, bro, dude, a hitchhike and all over the oh Like my God. totally and living, living on a boat. That's, living that's on the so boat. But he's rugged. one of the greatest piano players you could. He's a, a, a ranger. He's such a. He's so great. 
But anyway, we go to Humboldt, and then he, yeah, he has a girl that uh, he's on a Tinder date with. <laughs> And his, <laughs> her, 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 okay, this girl. He's prefacing the story of how Morgan little... finally got popped. By the way, oh which, shit, Tinder. This is how it it, Tinder. That, Tinder it was his serious? downfall. So he gets on a Tinder date and he's on the boat. Gets drunk with this girl, passes out in the boat. This girl's like on the deck, like <laughs> wasted out of her mind, just like, like being crazy, and then passes out. And a guest calls three one one, and this girl's <laughs> this girl's mom knows that she's on a Tinder date, so this girl's mom freaks out and calls the cops. Oh, shit. So then the cops show up, and Morgan, uh, like, what's the greatest part about that story though is that is something that would happen to Morgan. Morgan, yeah, only Morgan, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but so the cops come, and then the, what happens? And he doesn't have an ID and then he start and he's a he's a like he, he he's a, a, a tail spinner like he, he he's so he's, good he's moving but they had him me. they had him pinned pinned to the nines and he um he couldn't get out of it and they've started really de- they're like well who are you actually and they figured they're like oh you've been on the run for five years in texas so he ended up going back so he's he's doing two years but he just got he just got accepted into uh, a GED. Well, he just he never finished high school, so he just finished his GED in high school, and then he's doing a intern program for I can't remember what trade he's learning. And he's in the midst of uh, he's been writing um, these short vignettes of like just stories from his life. And I've been pushing, and he's doing it like like he's been sending out to his dad, and his dad is like printing them out and faxing them to all of us. And basically, by the time he's done, he's gonna have a like. At the least 200, 300 page vignette book, and we're going to try to get it published for you him. You should write a song about him, though. Oh, yeah. The Ballad of the Monkey Bear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah you yeah, write yeah. a song about him. Yeah, this absolutely. Guy. Have you started absolutely. on it? Uh, uh, what, what, what do you have? What In do you your have? heart. No, he, he wrote a song called The Buckaroo Blues. And, uh, what, yeah. Buckaroo it, like, Blues. The Buckaroo Blues. That. Yeah. Because him and. Him and Josh were driving up uh, uh, to where I was and drove through Bakersfield. And, uh, th- th- like, basically, him and Josh were, like, fist fighting in the car. And and, and Monkey Bear got upset and started, <laughs> it started working on the it started shit. working on the the buckaroo <laughs> blues the buckaroo Buck- blues yeah 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 i have the song at the house i need to i need we, we need to record you it got, we need yeah to do man it. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you yeah. haven't said anything but you guys are married right yeah absolutely, Jazz. <laughs> absolutely. of course <laughs> tell me how you all met and how did you when did you start performing together i feel like it's most entertaining to hear you tell these stories well we, he's we, a very good storyteller a tail He's, spinner. Yeah, it's like a big fish is what I always think of. Oh, I love that movie. It's like it doesn't really matter <laughs> if the details are slightly overblown. Yes, it's just way yeah. better to express details person to person. If it's some, if it's someone that you care about enough to like put a little bit of extra sauce in there. I'm yeah. just gonna season it up a little bit more. He always spice it up a he little always, bit. He always spices it up a little bit. So you, t- his version Let's hear of his. us okay, is fine. different than why reality. You, why don't but you I tell me your version? version. <laughs> All right. All right. So I was uh, in college in San Marcos, and I'd been friends with her sister for years, and it was a big deal for me to leave East Texas at the time. Like I was, you know, very much just want, you know, very you know, small town or whatever, really wanting to get out. So I like had no well, desire. Well, I've been I've been gone for. 10 years, 10, 12 years from East Texas. Uh-huh. Lived in New York for a long time. Uh-huh. Yeah, never thought I would come back to East Texas. Uh-huh. Finally came back, met a sister I had never really known. I hear tell of this Hurricane Keeney <laughs> that I have to meet. Continue. <laughs> So I don't want to go back to East Texas at all. And Kat- Kathleen Cole, her sister, was uh, uh, had always told me about this this girl, and I was like, I'm not. I don't want no. I'm not going back. There. I don't care about no girl back home. I do not care. And <laughs> Kathleen was always like, No, like you're either gonna uh, 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 love her, hate her, or you're gonna be best friends. And then we got married. So it's like it's, <laughs> it's literally oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah, I'm just, no, just but yeah, I know. I, yeah, it gets yeah, it gets all around. But <laughs> but uh I had no uh desire for any of that. And then one time um I just so there's this thing, what's that that highway outside of Mineola that the big uh the big garage sale that they had, like highway it's like 71? Called, uh, Highway 71. Yeah. Uh, there's a garage sale on Highway 71, and it, I think it stems from Alabama all the way through East Texas, and there's this huge garage sale that goes on, I think twice a year. And it's the most amazing stuff. I mean, shit, you'd never find any, like, it's like crazy stuff. That's it's why like, you came back to town? No. Well, oh. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I came back and bought that jacket. 
that, that I met yeah, you in. Yeah, and I had this jacket. No, that your was, mama found you that jacket. I know, but I was like, we were. I was at the Highway 71 with mom, and we like we found oh, okay. like we found that. <laughs> we do have to. I do have to plug Kelly Whitley just a tad. Kelly Malone. Kelly Malone. Sorry, she'll always be a Whitley for me. But oh, yeah. yeah, Malone. Kelly yeah, Malone. Kelly anyway, Malone. Uh, uh, I run a vintage pop up, and his mother and I are very connected on that point. But continue. So. Anyway, vintage, I get this world. I get this fancy cool jacket I like and then Kathleen tells me that her sister's coming to uh this local bar and Tyler and uh Breakers shout out and uh uh I go in and then this woman walks through the door and uh I'm like holy hell I believe I bet that that's her and I walk up and we like she sees me and I see her and it's just like this immediate connection and we walk up and hold each other and then we look back and we just like like not make out but like kiss each other <laughs> you know that's not what first happened inter- interaction <laughs> she claims that this didn't happen i'll tell you, I'll tell you what actually all happened all right yeah, yeah. 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 you keep but telling in, your version you can big fish and i'll give you the small fish real fry in, version in, in my, yeah in my, in my mind that's how, how it happened and then um and then we played uh football sugar packet each, football, sugar packet football. <laughs> Out on the on the counter at Breakers uh, for a while, and I was like, "Holy moly!" And then and then the endless endless weekend happened, which uh, was like right after that. Uh, <laughs> Kathleen, her sister, dated one of my best friends, who's one of the rowdiest human beings that's ever existed. So they came down with Noble, and it was just because I was about to move to New York uh, at the time. So Ka- Noble came down, Cat came down, and uh, my buddy Kurt came down. And, uh, it was just this, like so much fun. Like my buddy Logan was just the ton of homies and stuff. And we went and floated the river, mm-hmm. which is yeah. the actual floated. first place that we kissed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess we kissed in a tree. We climbed up a tree. Yeah. And Tom- I'm, Thompson's I'm, Island outside of San Marcos. I'm the reason that we smooched because my yep. little, my little booty was climbing up the tree and you were just following right after it like yep. a little... <laughs> hungry pup and we got we got up we got up in the limbs <laughs> with your little monkey lady yeah and i smooched you and i jumped off the limb yeah. and it was a very tall tree yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. that's actually the first time we kissed mm-hmm. although he remembers in his mind that the first time we saw one another is the first time mm-hmm. we kissed mm-hmm. <laughs> which is sweet and well they're both great versions yeah. Yeah. yeah how long did you date before you got married Six, six years, probably. Five, six yeah. years. Six years, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. And how long have you been married? Uh, a little over a year. We got married back uh, last February. Uh, 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 over a year ago, last February. Last okay. February, yeah. Which is another fucking crazy ass thing. Like Spill that, it. Well, well I mean, it. <laughs> like we, like it was uh, okay. So um, uh, Miss Vicky was talking about the the ele- electricity and stuff. And so, like, we, like, Texans freak out about, like, snow on the ground or frost or whatever. And everyone was like, yeah, 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 all this stuff. And I was like, man, whatever. This is a bunch of bullshit. This is overblown stuff. No worrying about it. We'd already figured out that we were going to leave that weekend. And then right in the middle of that, uh, this witch that we lived above. <laughs> witch? This witch we lived above got where, us where, evicted where, out where of our damn apartment. Where is she from? She's from San Francisco. San Francisco. She, <laughs> Lord God. And she, got, she got us evicted out of our evil apartment. Dog, we, evil oh my woman. God. Man, I told you, woman. I would put you on blast one day, you evil woman. So anyway, we get kicked Witchy out of Witchy woman, huh? Terrible, terrible. Not bad, the good kind, though. Bad, no. bad, bad no, energy very, kind of yeah, person. Yeah. But anyway, she just, it, it, that's a whole long story. But we uh, <laughs> decided to leave the very first day of the frost and the snow and all that stuff. And we were going to try, like we were talking about earlier, we were going to try to do laundry. And even in the middle of that, we we're actually like, we should try to bounce. It's kind of seeming crazy. So we're leaving. I mean, this isn't like noon. Like, this isn't late. Or, like, it is the middle of the damn day. And we're driving through. It takes me, I think, six. So if you know anything about Austin, Houston is three hours away. It took us like six or seven hours to get to Houston. Like, I'm talking about like at least 40 or 50 cars on the highway. Like, I don't doubt it. Bro, I'm talking about straight sideways sliding down the highway perpendicular it was in wow. it was insane and she straight up just closed her eyes like this and she's <laughs> I didn't like make i sound. trust no she didn't she's like i, I just sound. trust you and i'm like go oh my <laughs> like it was like bad it was crazy it was crazy and i was but, like baby we're gonna get there mm-hmm. because we knew that we were gonna go get hitched mm-hmm. in a little chapel mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i knew we'd make it and then yeah. we stayed with my good buddy sam and orange and then we woke up the next day and there was like a foot of snow on the ground 
And then we drove through all the snow in Orange, Texas, which was like such an apocalyptic mindset. I've mind been fun. there. Oh, my God. Yeah, to <laughs> imagine that much no. snow on the ground. Like, <laughs> no, bro, it was, in, it was insane. And then we get in into Louisiana, and then Louisiana is freaking out about how bad it's going on. We haven't even got to New Orleans yet. Louisiana starts freaking out about how, how bad the snowstorm is. So uh, they're closing down highways behind us. Like we're just beating barricades, getting <laughs> oh, on. Wow. Finally, we don't beat one. The barricade closes. Finally, there's a semi truck in front of us that blows through a barricade. <laughs> barricade, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And we're like, like oh, let's all right, do it. right, let's. And it's just us in a semi truck on the interstate. We're like, holy shit! All right, let's fucking get it, buddy. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was crazy. And a perfect example of how crazy Louisiana is is we're driving on a back road, and there's the most huge, beautiful bald eagle I've ever seen in my life on the side of the road. <laughs> on a bag of trash <laughs> <laughs> like this. I was like, where, what the fuck is uh, going well, on down that's here? That's trippy yeah, as hell, Yeah, it was man. wild. It, but then we got to New Orleans with her uh, her brother and uh, his boyfriend and it, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It yeah. was incredible. Yeah, and then, but and it was right in the middle of Mardi Gras and there was no, it was just Mardi Gras. Man, that trip was fucking That crazy. trip was wild. <laughs> man, it was crazy. Am I allowed was, to tell the story of what you did the it. night before our wedding? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Don't tell too much. Don't okay. tell. Yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. let, um, let it rip. Uh, out of respect and love for my husband, I might not <laughs> tell the entire story. Um, shit got wild. Uh, there was a very beautiful experience of uh, not being like a full on Mardi Gras, you know, parade. So they were doing what was called Yardy Gras, where Yardy everyone Gras. was dressing up their massive mansions with just like freebies. Oh. And front like you could, yeah. you could, like yeah, the porches, you could, you like could the literally float. walk right, up right. and like select beads and oh, costumes and hats, well. like yeah. based off. They're the just doing the best they, they could. The best they could. Well, but they also well. had like magical, you know, structures in their front yard, mm -hmm. and it just turned into this whole thing because it couldn't be interactive. So Yardy Gras was what it turned into. Um, but what was incredible about it, and I don't know if you've been to Burning Man or... No, I haven't yet. Maybe but one day. this creation of just sort of like these mobile art cars, um, which is essentially, there just must be a lot of burners in New Orleans. It makes sense, but... Um, everyone was just running through the streets. They were driving a hot. They were driving a hot tub. They were driving a hot tub, hot tub, hot tub uh, on uh, wheels. Uh, a bicycle <laughs> hot tub. Yeah, but full bar. Yeah, full uh, bar. Yeah. It was a bar. bar. It was a busted ass hot tub <laughs> on on the chassis of a truck connected to a bicycle chain, like a bi like a bicycle gear with a, a whole blast. bar. It was. It was, so it was <laughs> out of this world. That sounds like we ended up so having a big party at the wild. Rock yeah. Mile. It was no, anyway. Yeah. The sweet husband had been kind of you been like kind of sober for a little while. <laughs> I, had, I hadn't really been drinking at all, at all like, and at all. he started drinking uh, like, he started uh, drinking. there you yeah. go I started, and yeah. i won't go into the full story of it because you know why would i unless we were not being I recorded. Threw up everywhere. I threw up all Where'd you throw up exactly? vomited the night before our wedding. Where'd you protect all, 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 all over all, the Airbnb? All, all, over my, all over the Airbnb. <laughs> and then poor Noble, nope, man, uh, Noble's brother is like one of the sweetest, most angelic human beings in the world, Mikey. They're all, they're amazing. <laughs> and I'm butt naked, just <laughs> like <laughs> all over this apartment. And they're like, oh my God. And I'm they, supposed none to get them married are, the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. My and then I was husband. like throwing up in the, in the shower, like, and trying to mush my throw up into the like down okay, the drain. Okay, well you just sold yourself down the river. Well, I didn't we, even do we're it. We're already there. I'm like, so glad you, know, you it was did just, those. Everybody, good shit. everybody in New Orleans, <laughs> everybody's been in New Orleans has a, a story like that. If you don't, then you haven't really. And then been what in happened the next morning? Okay, listen, this is bride to be. Like I, I mean, I had partied. I was sure, having a great course. time, but I was also preparing my soul for the sacred union the next day and that was not what my sweet husband had been doing so what happened the next day we're getting kicked out of our airbnb for reasons that we can't comprehend maybe someone heard you projectile vomiting i can't even I comprehend it. What, shady it, down there. what it must have been but anyway we're kicked out of the airbnb uh my brother and his boyfriend are in this massive like seething non-speaking fight the energy is just so potent and then colt who i'm supposed to get married to is so hung over and probably like still slightly reeking of vomit. <laughs> and I am getting myself prepared in the bathroom. And I was like, everyone else 
Can, I've never I've never done that in my life. I'm always a person to handle shit. Always, always. And it's I was like, game. I am the bride. I am not going to worry about yeah. any of these fuckheads. Like, they can be in a fight. <laughs> they will figure out where else we're going. You can be hungover as fuck. I'm just going to get pretty. And then we all went to breakfast. It was a nightmare. So it's probably fortunate that we're supposed to have another ceremony at some point down the well, road. Well, at the same time, but the, I mean, that ceremony was amazing, and you and you met I mean, your it, you met your friend that you hadn't seen in in years and years and years. Yeah, that was and I wild. mean, the chapel in New Orleans there, they were doing like gangster underground gay weddings, like way <laughs> back in the way day before it was legal. Oh, like yeah. they were That's marrying awesome. gay, like this chapel was unbelievable. It was so. Co- what was it and called? And the best thing about what, it is, the, what was it called? The, the chapel? Uh, it was just, I think, like French Quarter Wedding Chapel. Man, it was so, such and an amazing spot. And the greatest thing about it is, they had gotten divorced like a decade before. It was a couple that owned it. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Shit together, and we showed up, and it was the lady. And I was like, "Oh, where's home, dude?" That yeah. we like read all the reviews about. And she was like, "I hate that motherfucker. Yeah. We're only here on different yeah. days, and they were still running the wedding chapel." Wow, that's yeah. crazy. She was like, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. Might, might get rough. What time of day did you all get married? Like in the afternoon or like night? Two. Okay. Two in the afternoon. Do you even really recall? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> and Gio you know and what Mikey. else was so beautiful about it? We got married with, uh, we didn't have wedding rings yet. Yeah, so we. So we used no. We used the the wire off, off the, the uh, champagne, champagne bottle. Ports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I wore that for a while until it like literally like rotted off my finger. Yeah, and we found our wedding rings the next day. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And the uh, uh, and the the stones in this are uh, isn't it Herkimer? Herkimer. Herkimer, diamond. which is a, a North American diamond because we're not big fans of the diamond industry, but it's like a North American stone like like. And mine's my robber stone. Yeah. 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 But it's like, uh, what is it? Like uh, uh, New York, like out of New York, like yeah. New York, like upper New York, New York. Like, like the Catskills yeah. kind of like, right. like mine and kind of stuff. It's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. Yeah. Like, and our uh, wedding rings cost, I think like 40 bucks. Yeah. 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 It, it was great. <laughs> Grown too close, we let love in. And we could try, Lord, my heart would never mend. I love what you do and how you sound because for me, real country. The guys I like: Sturgill Simpson, oh, yeah. Ty- Tyler Childers, oh, yeah. Ryan Bingham. Oh yeah. And you have that same kind of aura and sound. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. Uh, I love all and then guys. I, you know, I have to assume that your influence is Johnny Cash, mm-hmm. Waylon now, Jennings. A right? lot of Waylon. Not. Re- I mean, I grew up on Johnny Cash, but not. Not. It's not that. I mean, but a lot of this stuff. Uh, it's. It's beyond even like ins- like inspired by because it's just like the earliest music I ever heard in my life. You know what I mean? Like, it's sure. like stuff that's not, it's like not even like a question of like, if I was going to say who inspires you, I'd be like, Oh, well like the misfits, Sam cook, Jackie Wilson, like that. Those are to me, you know, but that's like when I started trying to find my own music and, and going out and I mean, that list goes on and on and on, but like, I just got really interested in going all the way back to like, the beginning of myself with everything, you know, and then starting from there. Cause I've gone off so far with all this stuff and then getting back more in my church, you know, my church roots and like harmonizing and, you know, like, like old gospel songs and stuff, stuff that I know, you know, I didn't even, by the time I left the church, I never even cracked open the songbook Cause I knew every single song in the whole songbook by heart. Like the second they say it, I'd be like, Bro, like leaning, <laughs> leaning, leaning on the everlasting, um, you know, like all, like I, Oh how marvelous! Oh how wonderful! Leaning on the everlasting. I actually have like really precious snapshots in my mind of you as a child, just singing those gospel songs. Yeah, for sure. Getting super. Yeah, in Church of Christ, it was if you're playing instruments, and and, you know this isn't me saying anything bad about uh, any of that stuff because it made me who who I am, and I you know it's nothing like that, but. Like in, in, in that, uh, realm of, of the church, if you play instruments, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. Like it, it, in, in church. Right. So it's all about it's like the sin. voice yeah. and people singing together and doing it as one voice. And I've just 
have always loved like a big like a big sound i think that's a lot of my obsession with like a big sound comes from is like the earliest stuff i ever heard was like one of the biggest sounds you can hear is like <clears throat> 600 people all saying the same words it's just like an overwhelming especially if it's good you know and then you uh yeah it's just it's it's just like over uh, overwhelmingly awesome stuff so i just got back you know getting back into you know that that kind of stuff because i just started songwriting from like you know towns van zant and there like, you all go. these guys i like, love towns yeah. yeah absolutely i mean some of my earliest stuff like i mean like it's straight it just is like a towns a town song you know and then of course like bob dylan and stuff like but it was like yeah all that all that kind of all that kind of stuff you know it's so cool but then <clears throat> i just love rhythm so much and that's whenever i started really like listening to waylon jennings in a different way because i love waylon jennings he's great but Waylon Jennings, Waylon Jennings' rhythm section is what I love about Waylon Jennings and his use of like bass and when to put it in and when to take it out and like how to make something like get your like lit like that like <laughs> like that right? feeling yeah. is like this like the way like he like they like pull and push bass and how thick they have it in the mix so like all my stuff even more and more and more it's just. It's just going to be just such disgusting rhythm, like just such heavy, like ass dropping rhythm. I just love, I just love it. Stuff that people can dance to, you know, and Austin has such a strong two-stepping community that even in the midst of the record, I was like, there's an awesome club here called Hotel Vegas and another awesome one called White, White Horse. And I was like, if I could do something that's like 90% White Horse and 10% Hotel Vegas, I think that'd be pretty neat. And I, th I think I did, it got pretty close because I'm the... I play on all those clubs, you know, which sure. is kind yeah. of kind of weird. But it's I love like, both you know, of them. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. And I just I love like certain tones. I just don't ever want to get get you know. I want to utilize more. It's like can I put synth and steel guitar into a country ballad about being alone? You know what I mean? Like, does that work? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just inter like uh, just interested on in that stuff. Like, I just like when where's the line? Like, what you know? What is it? You know, maybe I'm a goofball dummy, but you know, it's just interesting to me. You know. So, where, where do your lyrics come from? I've been listening to them. How do you come up with these? Fortunately, also you can finally hear them because he's always been an unbelievable lyricist. And in the yeah, past that's two projects, what I'm asking. He's screaming them so hard yeah. that you can't yeah. hear anything, and so finally, <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you can hear him. Yeah, yeah, because I. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just play punk for so long, and, but I would work on song lyrically so so hard uh, as a songwriter. But it wouldn't be like you know, it wouldn't be any throwaway stuff. But man, I really don't. I don't really know. I don't really know. Like I, I'm obsessed with like, like gargant, like like we were talking earlier. Like I love. Like my father was an unbelievable. I was raised by great storytellers, like 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 tall tale people, liars, like pretty <laughs> sure. much straight up, just fucking. That's bullshit. But it's a great story. Like I was raised by people that were just ridiculously great storytellers, and um, that's all over. But you, you know, the, the hill country Texas has just a huge tradition of of that kind of thing. It's just like great. You know, if you can't tell a good story, if you can't like make make a group laugh when you're drinking it's kind of like what you know like it's like eh, whatever you know it's it's just kind of a thing and i've just always loved that and i've always like um like a lot of uh where i'm from here uh, i get a lot of inspiration from and like like i like taking themes like i have this one song where like <clears throat> on paper like if i broke it down it's just like oh okay this is about like a like a woman that uh you like uh loved and then she betrayed you right on paper it's like okay cool but like i i i really like taking like really simple themes like that and then seeing how like gargantuan and epic and like almost godlike i can make the language and make it just like massive like cool clear water yeah right? that's one of my favorite songs cool. of yours that's all Seriously. yeah so the first line in that if you ever go to el paso which everybody should it's awesome and then if you want go to uh the kentucky bar uh the kentucky bar across the border in juarez and get uh the place where the margarita was invented uh it, I, that whole area is so great but up above el paso is uh the like overlook right and it's just this like el paso is like right at the base of this giant um mountain 
Guadalupe, yeah. right? Uh, no, What's Guadalupe it? peaks further. Up. Okay, but I think okay. they're all. The, I think it might be the uh, Guadalupe Mountains. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I, you might be I right. I don't right. know. You're probably but right. I don't know. We'll fact um, check it. Actually, it's funny that we mentioned that because American Month, the cover that's Guadalupe Peak on okay. the cover. Yeah, okay. which me and my buddy were doing a motorcycle trip, and we, we took took that photo. It's at, uh, at Guadalupe Peak, which is the highest point of the state, like the highest uh, mountain of the of the state. But uh, at that overlook in El Paso. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, uh, but at El Paso, uh, you stand at this overlook, and there's almost no stars in the sky because there's so many lights between El Paso and Juarez, mm-hmm. right? It's like, and it's all flat, like it's just flat as a pancake out, right? Until you get more over into like water, and there's stuff that like kind of swoops up or whatever. But for the most part, and it looks like uh, uh, I remember one time uh, we stole beer, we stole beer from a gas station <laughs> in El Paso and drove up there and we're drinking it, and I was looking out over this stuff with a buddy. And I was like, man, it's like almost like all the stars of the sky have just like fallen down on here. So it's all the stars have fallen to the floor, cold and shivering. And that's like all these stars have have fallen down. And then and then the further out you look, like once it gets in the water, the lights go from uh, uh, what is it at Walmart? What kind of lights do they have at Walmart? Like fluorescent, fluorescent right yeah. <laughs> so it goes from fluorescent lights to filament lights once you go out to what is and they're like this warm old like uh, like wire uh, yeah like, like wire amber light. like yeah. an amber color and they like flicker so it's like all the stars fall before cold and shiver it you know so it's a little trippy <clears throat> yeah absolutely but it's like got canceled Continue, continue. So it's it's so it's figure it out. So it's taking uh uh, yeah, just taking stuff stuff like that, and even um, another stuff like La Llorona, you know that is the old the old story. Wailing woman. Yeah, the wailing woman, right? So that that's another um like uh uh uh, I probably butchering butchering too like, but I've heard that that tale forever. La Llorona. Was uh, this woman um, just an old way, like 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 uh, folklore uh, uh, story from from that area? But uh, uh, um, I change it to Lolina. Um, I hear Lolina's cries on the wind. You know, the sound no sounds more lonesome from the cement canyons, or I don't even remember my lyrics, but uh, from uh, <laughs> cement uh, can, can, canyons and channels or something. Something she cries. Oh, she I just whatever it is, or if you can't recall it, but I it, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, but it's just stuff like that. It's just taking stuff that that's like um, neat and, and neon inspiring. Neon Longhorn, right? What's that lyric? I love that one so much. Neon Longhorn rides the neon. Uh, a neon Longhorn, a hide of fire. Uh, man, I don't even remember right now. I'd have to play it. I yeah, can't, I can't. Yeah. I can't think of it. But yeah, just stuff like that. Just taking, take taking things and just trying to make them like like big and i also like the idea of it being played in like places like europe or japan and people listening to it and be like wow texas sounds in epic as fu-, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. just to just i don't know just put kind of put out like an epic lore you know it's all like funny games but it's just funny to me well i was upset because i've missed you two and the band performing at uh, viva utopia mm-hmm. because i'd just given an interview with greyhounds and it took a little bit out of me but that's a whole nother story that the <laughs> listeners can listen to uh at some point but uh <laughs> how i met you and you made an impression was the fact that after i don't know what time of night it was but the, the stars out there are unreal uh-huh. i mean i love marfa i thought that but I had no idea how beautiful it was at night. Well, from that area out to about Marfa and then south to the border is the darkest area in the entire Western Hemisphere. Like, it's the darkest night sky. It's the darkest skies in the entire Western Hemisphere. That's why they're so like, oh, my God. And the stars at night are (laughs) big and bright, (laughs) deep in the heart of Texas, you know. Yep. But here, go ahead. But, no, so I can't remember the sweet lady that was performing <laughs> uh no her music was great she was also a good storyteller but she apparently lived through about what 83 tornadoes or yeah, something yeah <laughs> and she's telling about uh, every single one every single one of them i just at some point i said i gotta go grab a, uh, some beer yeah. and as i'm walking by you she had told god knows how many stories about these specific 
experiences with her boyfriend or husband i can't remember and you looked like you were in a tornado <laughs> and you said well can't we hear it <laughs> and i remember just looking at vicky and saying that guy i was like yeah what is this twister where's <laughs> bill paxton like <laughs> So my plan was is I was going to go get some beer, and then what ended up happening was, because I missed you all playing, was I listened to your music, and I said, I got to go meet that guy, and then it was super dark, and we ran into you, yeah. you and two other guys, mm -hmm. and then hit it off immediately, and I just love y'all's music so much that I, I want to get the word out. Nice. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, I'm, love. No, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love all genres of music, and when I heard it, and I can't wait to see you live in person. When are you going to be playing next? We got the the <laughs> FSG. I mean, that's that's some nice to talk about too. What's, getting what's getting the, signed what, what, FSG, we and then we got we a Waco we show. Have, we haven't got signed. Oh well. Uh, uh, what's the date though to the Waco show? I have no idea. You mm -hmm. said May seventh. May seventh. I'm yeah. gonna butcher it. I really need my phone to, to check the thing. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and what's the name of the festival? Uh, it's in Waco and it's uh, for FSG it's called Feel So Good Records and um, I should have done my homework before I, uh, I got I got, up, I got up here but uh, I'm uh, pretty sure that it's on May <laughs> pretty sure it's on May 7th in Waco uh, but we are playing with Aaron McDonald who if you get a chance to listen to and even more so than that <laughs> if anyone uh, can send us a uh, manager we'll be <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, it's coming yeah yeah I yeah, feel it yeah, this yeah. Needs well it'll, yeah. it'll happen I promise yeah. no but uh, um, you guys are talented I really love it thanks buddy uh, but no the um, uh, there's a band that we're playing with called Rattlesnake Milk that everybody should go out and what's listen to what's the name to. of that band Rattles, Rattlesnake, Rattlesnake Milk. Milk yeah and these these are boys up from Lubbock that are doing just uh, one of the coolest bands in the city the, the one of the one, one of the bands in the city i think are doing some of the coolest stuff like they're 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 doing something so so cool start out with a song called dave dudley if you get a chance there's a really fantastic group but we're playing with them and then aaron mcdonald is a great honky-tonk guy um that uh uh we're playing with he's headlining and then we're playing with them and i mean yeah we're coming to yeah we're coming to bring the thunder down we'll get to wacko and waco you know so. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm yeah, come on, you guys you out. come on. I, I'm I'm a certain. <laughs> we can all come ride on. together. That'll be fun. Yep. Sure. If you ever get to uh, take a ride in Georgina to any destination, the, Georgina, uh, who's Georgina? The, the couch on wheels uh, is parked in your driveway. Been, no, I've been in his van. Oh yeah, pick you up. Pick me up from Sixth uh, Street. Yeah. Really? Yes, yeah. Yes. The other night. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He's I went real... and saw Nikki Glaser uh, perform at Paramount Theater. Oh. Nice, yeah. And I just happened to call him and he said, Hey man, you need a ride? I said, Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll take one. Yeah, and the van is uh uh Georgina Clementine Ophelia Jones, the shirt the Georgina <laughs> Georgina Clementine Ophelia Jones the third, the showboat. That's a lot of shit going on there. Yeah, man. well there's a lot of shit going on inside my <laughs> no, van. I, I, I know, <laughs> I've been inside it, man. <laughs> Chaos. Uh, it's a spell, a spell on wheels. Yeah. <laughs> so the last thing I want to ask is, tell me when is your next album going to come out? You think? Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a slow bleed because so I have a song right now called Eighty Thousand Pounds of Pain and that's finished and that's gonna be one of the singles off of it and then we have a music video with that coming out that's gonna be really really. Uh, uh, I mean, it's going to be super damn awesome. But basically, instead of it being like me releasing an album all at once, I'm just going to release singles. You're going to trickle with, it out? For a year. Okay. Like, just bleed, because the internet can just, you know, if you've ever worked super hard on something and then thrown it to the internet, and it literally, it's just like a fart in the wind. You're like, oh my God, like I spent a, six months on this and it's literally like... 200 likes it's like man what am i even what am i even doing so it's like uh yeah i'm gonna slow bleed this thing out and then have content with every single every sing every single because as much as like mu music and lyrics and stuff i also get uh like uh music video imagery and like that kind of stuff and i'll kind of like co-direct and and am kind of like the like artistic direct the 
<laughs> music videos getting across, getting out like uh, you know, this kind of like a- image stuff. So sometimes like uh, the songs like kind of kind of give me some imagery or whatever. So it's either going to be like actual thought out uh, music videos or a um, just us playing live or something. Something that's just like the single and like other other stuff, you know, just because I, I just got to be working all like all the time, just putting stuff out because it's just it's good for me. Yeah. Well, I really like what you guys are doing. That's why I wanted to have you on. Um, Happy that we're all friends. I like what you're doing, Tom. Yay! Say again. I like what you're doing, Tom. We love what you're doing, Tom. Old tater head. This is Tom's house. This is Tom's house. (laughs) But uh, no, I want to get the word out to listeners because you you've got something going. Thanks, brother. Thanks. And uh, we got to help you book some more dates. Get out there on the road. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah, I'd love I'd love to get out there. I mean, um, Georgina's ready. Georgina's I don't know about that, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. It's money. Keep it going. We good? Yeah, perfect. I found a pale skinned horse, one which I wish to ride. Entranced by golden form, I wish to break and make it mine. And I threw my saddle on, engraving fates to Zach. Sleepless eyes Craving greener pastures It's like the blade of a knife Like a sword And I fell like a house on the corner with no owner. And I was fading away. Well, I bathe in chloroform. I tear the memory to tatters. Wire cutters on the floor Making secret passage In a mended fence that I ignored A whole for trespassers We get a grip, this love's a bore And help a soul get wrapped It's like the blade of a knife I could sell And I fell Like a house on the corner With no hope on it And I fell like a boat off the shore With no hope And I fell to lie a weight off my shoulders Like a hold And I was fading away The head of an eagle Lord and she has A heart of prey Well the gown The gown has been torn Knowing she 
Just bathing my blood, my blood. It's like the blade of a knife. I can say, and I felt it like a house on the corner with no hope. And I felt it like a boat off the shore with no hope. And I felt it like the weight off my shoulders I couldn't hold it And I was fading away Fading away Fading away We've never done that one acoustic before. Mm -hmm. That was a badass. Thank you for Thank sharing you that, man. Thank you for having us on here. Yay. Absolutely, Tom. man. <laughs> Old tater this head. This Tom's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough. This has been fun. I was so extremely honored and privileged to have shared House on the Corner, which is a song that he has not released yet, Cold, along with his wife singing along. It was, it was beautiful. And like I said before, he's a diamond in the rough, man. I think that he's got a bright future, and I'm blessed that we've become friends, he and his wife. And I can't wait to help him on his journey and see him grow as an artist. So until next time, this is Neuron Studio Bonham. Thanks.